the game to see the boxing boys. Welcome back, gang, for the first time and hopefully many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notifications right here, this little bell, so you can get those emails every time we go. There's a new heavyweight U.S. signing, so I don't know. I'm trying to see who's the manager. Yeah. You, know, you have any hands on that? Any new U.S. Uh, heavyweights? Is there 17 and 0? Jermaine Franklin. Oh, is he signing with the zone? No, Salita, isn't he? Yeah, he is with Salita, yeah, but yeah. is he going to be TV with the zone? No. No. No, no, no interest? No, his fight's on Showtime, actually, on the Clarissa Shields underground. Okay. Maybe it's someone else. No, probably. I mean, it's it hasn't Franklin. been announced. It was Franklin, I know it's guy. Franklin, oh, right, okay, but yeah. it hasn't been announced yeah, yet he's whether fighting, he's fighting. Um, he's fighting Rydell Booker. Okay. So you know just everything. I know everything. Eddie, man, yeah. um, no one works the mic like you. I was, really? I was back there just watching. I mean, it really looked like, I mean, uh, honestly, Oscar was reading off a of paper. Yeah. Like, no, you, know know your yeah. you know your fighters. You know your I do, because we had, actually we had a meeting this morning, and I was talking to a fighter, and like, if you're selling something, if you don't believe in what you're selling, you can't sell it, all right? So, I used the, the example this morning with a little pot of ketchup. It was Heinz. It was a really fucking good pot of ketchup, you know? And I know there ain't a ketchup as good as that, really. So if I'm telling you about the ketchup, if I'm explaining about how juicy these tomatoes are, that beautiful texture when you dip it the sausage in there, you're going to go, fuck, that sounds nice, mm -hmm. right? But if I'm going, fucking hell. Oh, yeah, uh, so this ketchup is the best. But in my heart, I don't really believe it. I can't deliver it in the same way. So it's very easy when you get a fight like this, very easy when you have a relationship like you do with Danny and Keith, to, to, to give that emotion. And I'm excited. But I'm not just pretending I'm excited. I'm really excited. And I know everything about every fighter I represent. I know everything about their weight class, their opponents, their division, the rankings in their division. So I don't need paper. You know, and I think sometimes that can actually affect your flow. No, I, than, agree. Like, I just think you're better off just going, right, let me, like, this is from the heart. Not like, okay, so I want to just say that this fighter, like, you know, so. So you're not married? I'm married, yeah. How do you do it? What? I mean, travel. you're never home. I know, it's not going very well at the moment. No. Do you, do you bring her with you? Or? Yeah, quite, quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. I mean, at, 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 yes. Yeah, come. Both Eddie. Come. The two Eddies. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, like, it's exploded so much over the last six months that it becomes very difficult, not just for the wife, but for the kids. Mm -hmm. and I was actually telling a funny story that when I was having my little fun with Espinosa the other night, yeah. my wife was going to me, can you get off the phone? Like, I'd just come back for one night mm -hmm. from Mexico. She was going, can you get off the phone, please? I'm going, whoa, 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 one second, one second. But right, and then back, you know, so it's difficult, and you have to get the balance right, because there is a bigger picture out there. Life is yeah. much more important than just working and promoting fights so but it's addictive you know that because you're in the sport absolutely and uh but it's always important in life to get balance right and you know at some point you have to just sit back and i'm trying to delegate more i'm trying to say you know like young frank smith who works with me like he's a good young kid he's 26 years old he's got plenty of energy but, but there's no Eddie, there's no one like that. No, but Eddie that's Hearn. the problem. I'm, you know, and I say that arrogantly, but they want you up, you know, they want mm -hmm. you up there talking some shit. They want to so it's, you know, we're blessed at the same time because I could be doing a lot different so, things that aren't certainly aren't fun. How much did Rios ruin the plans? Um, there was like rumors that Josh Kelly was gonna get a US debut with Brandon Rios. No, Is there any was, truth to that? No, no, absolutely. It's probably more likely now okay. than before. Um, Jesse Vargas was probably a more likely fight and he may fight so Kelly? No, no, for Rios. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, with, with Brandon, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but I signed Brandon because I'm almost like a fan and I like the guy and I know what he delivers. I didn't really sign Brandon to think, oh, we can, you know, put him here and work him in here. Yeah. Like, I just like Brandon Rios and going to Mexico was great. We're, we're learning. I think, you know, I look back at some of the interviews we did and, you know, like the launch of the zone and stuff like that. And I was very, very bullish and I'm still very bullish, but I'm also learning. 
and I'm understanding a lot more about the new markets, new territories, the country, you know, the so patterns. You, are you that, saying that Mexico wasn't an economical success? Not that uh, I don't want okay. it to be because I'm, okay. I'm the type of guy that wants no, boxing yeah, to continue no, to take no, us no. to different I mean, countries. Like, in the UK, I know the finances like the back of my hand, right? I know how many tickets we're going to sell, I know the sponsorship revenue, I know the international TV, I know what it costs to show, and here we're learning. So Mexico, yeah, we, we made money, but in Mexico, we had 6,000 people in there. We probably took 30 grand on the gate because it's like 10 bucks or something like that. So, but it's not really about the gate revenue, it's more about the atmosphere that you create because that is the TV product, right? Now, we did a show in Kansas, we had 4,000 people there. The, the local kid, Hernandez, finished, and then Clarissa was on, and Jarrell was on, and there was like 1,500 people in there for Jarrell. Wow. Just because they don't, un but they didn't even know that fight was on. So you have to educate the audience. In Mexico, they turned up at 3.30, and they didn't leave till the end. And they're so passionate about it. Like, they, they love it, you know? And that was so much more rewarding than taking a few hundred thousand dollars on the gate. So I'm just saying that I'm learning about, you know, next week we're in Turning Stone. Then we're in Philly, you know, then we're in Vegas for this one. Then we've got our first LA show with Rung Savai Estrada and the Henny Rutt. So it's just... It's like, What's up with Zelayo Bang? You were supposed to put him on a Monaco show. He had visa who? issues. Zang. Yes, yes. We're supposed to be on that. And we're actually... I spoke to Dino Duba today. We're going to be doing something with him. I like him, you know. I think he's a... Every heavy... Co-promotion or just a one-fight deal? No, I'm happy to do a, you know, a multi-fight co-promotion with him. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a, what, 20 and 0 Chinese heavyweight who's six foot eight and can punch. So Southpaw too, I believe, yeah. right? And it, but he's ready to fight. Like he's, he's, you know. No, I've watched him spar with Adam Kornak. I mean, what's, what's going to be interesting is because because I, I know the heavyweight division like the back of my hand, and it's very hard to find those middle level guys. Like not middle level is the wrong word, but like I'll give you an example. The guys to fight people like Miller. Like when we had Miller, it's like fuck. Who do you fight? Like you can't fight Kanaki, the pals, you know. You can't fight Brazil because they want either too much money or they don't really want the fight. You can't really fight Parker because it, like a lot of those middle guys are just waiting, so they don't want to. That's why Fury, I think, is a really interesting situation now. It's like, who does Fury fight? It looks like he fights Parker, right? Parker got out of the Derek Tesoro deal to go talk to Aaron yeah, again. No, no, I think that part that was more. I was involved in that deal. That was more. We run out of time and they wouldn't want to go into camp. But he's come back on to me looking for a fight, so I don't think that fight's happening either. But the thing that the thing that shocks me so much about Fury Wilder was. I knew, because I spoke to Fury, he didn't want to fight anyone with a pulse, right? And that's why I never thought that fight would happen. But now, I think we're in the same situation where I think you're going to be really shocked and disappointed by his opponent. Maybe I'm wrong. But who's he going to fight? Like, I say he don't fight. He doesn't Martin. have options. It's Oscar Rivas, Kurt Brett, Pulev. Rivas. I mean, Rivas Ruv or Pulev. I mean, the Pulev fight, Maybe Brian Jennings. stylistically, is one of the worst fights Fury against... Uh, against the Hula. Like, oh man, the danger for Tyson Fury is, unless he's got that guy who's coming to fight, who's an elite fighter, his style is horrendous to watch, right? He could fight in the US and he could absolutely stink the place out. And it would actually affect the Wilder fight, you know? Wilder's probably gonna go in there and fight Brazil. That's a live, that's a good, that's a good fight. Yeah, but if you're out, how do you say, hey, you were gonna make 20, but let's go fight Brazil now? Well, because he should be getting close to that number anyway to fight Brazil. 20 million yeah. to fight Brazil. No Why the hell would Hal Heyman pay him 20 million to fight because Brazil? Because he can get it elsewhere. It doesn't mean he has to pay him. Yeah, so you're saying, saying to keep him, you're saying to keep Wilder from signing to someone else, you got to give him 20 million to fight oh, Brazil? I think you got to give him 15 million for that fight. Wow. But that's the marketplace. It's crazy. Don't get me wrong. But you can't have Joshua making whatever he's making, Fury making 20 million, and then Wilder sitting there going, okay, I'll take seven. Because he can get it on the zone and he can get it on ESPN. So I don't like Shelly Finkel's comments when he says, we're not going to give our fighter away. I mean, but you wouldn't sign a, a fighter over either, would you? Because you hear Frank Warren today, he's saying yeah, if it, it's out of our hands. Yeah, but Top Rank and Bob Arum are in control. Frank, Frank, so Frank Warren has no control over Tyson Fury. Allegedly. Okay. But actually, probably quite true. But I'm saying about Shelley's comments, like, it's not your job to give a fighter away. As an advisor and a manager, you have to look at the landscape. If he's a free agent, right? Which he To a start, network. Yes, of course. But he's a promotionally free agent as well, right? He hasn't got a sign with me to come and fight on the zone. He can fight on my show. 
right? But what I'm saying is, if he's got offers out there for 15 million for a voluntary defence, you can't ignore those offers. So the beauty of our offer is that you don't have to. You don't have to defense. Who, who or a mandatory defence. Or whatever. Who, do, who are you Brazil, willing to pay 15 million dollars for Deontay Wilder? Brazil, White, Wilder? Konaki. Oh, you'll pay for all those things? Absolutely. Fans? But they got to be on the zone. Uh, yeah, if, if I'm going to pay the money, they've got to be on it. No, 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 I get it. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that I'm not looking to tie you into five, six fights like so top ranker. So this is a one fight, two fifteen fights, million dollars. Joshua. Now we got to do, we got to do one voluntary, and we got to do the two Joshua. So fifteen fights. with whoever you could get to sign the line, then Plus. sixty forty with Joshua. Yeah, or even made all you guys or, do. Yeah, or, 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 or even more. Wow. Who knows? But I would, I would actually in go America. Back. Yeah, we could do it in America. First fight in America. We could do it. We don't want to. What about the rematch? You know that was the issue. Then I think if, I think if the fight, again, all to be discussed. But I think if Joshua was to lose the fight, he should get the opportunity to do it in the UK. Okay, but fair. not a higher percentage as the loser. No, 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 no. no. But that was no because you know your, your rematch did have a 50-50 yeah, rematch that's great. It's also for Joshua higher, as a loser. That's not a higher percentage. Yeah, but he's the loser. It should but be also, the, the yes, winner. As understand. Dillian White all says these the lion numbers, should come from all the winner. these numbers were pre-fury. But listen, isn't it hypocritical for Joshua to say, you fight me under my terms, you got the keys to the land, except the rematch is still 50-50, I'm still slightly it's in control. To be honest, if you're offering a voluntary defense to someone, take Wilder out, that's more than fair. By the way. Mm -hmm. So you're saying to someone, I'm going to give you the opportunity to fight. There's five million. If you beat me, you're going to make 15 or 20 in a rematch. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but you're, you're negotiating the second yes, fight as a loser. But what I'm saying to you now is things have changed. We, when we negotiated those splits, right, just let me finish, just let me finish. He hadn't fought Fury. He's pro, like, I accept his profile now is much higher. I accept. That's why when we offered him $15 million now, we're offering him, I don't know, nearly, probably nearly double that now, right? Because his profile has increased for whatever reason. But, so let's just talk about it. Me, I'll say this to you, every time we interview now, we're having the conversations that I should be having with him. Now, is the 15 going to be fair in his eyes since it's rumored that you're giving Billy Joe Saunders 15? Yeah. Where were we? You said we'd offered Billy Joe Saunders 15. Yeah, is that no, 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 no. Perfect. No. I, I no, want you to but, debunk but, these but, rumors. But by the way, probably because he was offered the Saunders fight and, sorry, the Andrade fight and then a Canelo fight and then, so yeah, maybe oh, cumulative, so yeah, no, 15. Like, like, okay. I like Billy Joe. <laughs> a tenth would be too much, you know? So, um, no, absolutely. And, you know, that's why I really, I think, Showtime are in a tough spot with Wilder because they can't pay Wilder that kind of money unless he's on pay-per-view. Like, so but when does the zone money run out? How could they keep paying this type because, of money? Because they have a huge investment bot and it ain't going anywhere. This ain't end. Like, they're not running out of money. Like they have a four, five, eight-year plan with us and money money allocated to make this happen. So it's not like oh, if we don't get subscribers. And by the way, we're getting subscribers. This fight, Joshua's fight, we're in a good spot to have a good run. But you guys are not releasing subscribers or no, viewers. You got to ask those questions to those people. Well, I asked John McCross. Yeah. He said, "Why is a private company and their shares are not open? Yeah. They don't have. They're not. Uh, they don't have to." Yeah. But like, let me tell you, they are spending and spending and spending, and I see behind the scenes more and more and more. It's like, let's make Joshua Wilder. Come on, let's make. Let's let's get Golovkin. Let's do this. Let's do that. It's not. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, we can't really afford this. This is how aggressive they've been. Listen, maybe. Well, speaking of aggressive, what's up with uh, Kid Galahad and Josh Warren? Made a full. Is the day for the purse bid? No, it made a full the fight. So who won the purse bid? Frank Warren. Whoa, I thought the zone was in boxing. It's not an American fight, it's a UK fight. Ah, yeah. less interest, kind of like Dillian White. We bid $1.4 million, which was fucking huge for that fight, and he bid 1.6. So, and was the split to the challenger? 65-35 for the IBF for so the new rule. So Kid Galahad is making like 600,000, you know, so good luck to him. And, um, but there's the this, there's this Sky UK pop, and then there's the design. It's a bit like White Chisora. Design looked at it and went, I don't, we don't think this is US relevant. I didn't, we love that fight. I didn't agree with him, by the way. We but, loved it. You know, um, Chisora put on a hell of a performance. Yeah. He's fighting again April 20th, actually. So. Yeah, and he's with Dave Cowell. Correct. Right? Things are moving. Things yeah. are moving. Good.
So what about Flip Hardworth? Is he going to get a named opponent? Because he was doing good without yeah. you in terms of yeah. climbing up those yeah. rankings. Mate, I, I, one of the reasons I wanted to sign him is they're up for like fighting all the top guys. And he's highly ranked but in the he, WBC already. It gets difficult, as I was talking to you about those middle level guys. Like, do you want to fight Philip Hergovich? You've got to imagine you're in my shoes and I approach Charles Martin. Right? And I go, Charles, do you want to fight Philip Hergovich? And he goes, who? And then he looks at him and goes, but no, not really, you know? Adam Karnacki, do you want to fight Philip Hergovich? No, no, no. Why would you fight Philip Hergovich? You're going to get beat. Okay? So the only way you fight him is for money. But because of the level he's at the moment in terms of value, commercial value, the money you're spending on opponents, you are limited to the Amir Mansours that he's fought, the Kevin Johnsons that he's fought, and those kind of guys. So we've got to stick the money in to give him the guys that, you know, he's going to be, I believe he's going to be... Who would you like to see him face? What kind of name? Charles, Charles Martin's tied up with Greg Corbin in Dallas. Yeah, correct. Uh, I would like him to fight. He, like, he can fight middle level guys. Kaufman. Travis. Uh, Travis Kaufman. You mentioned no. a lot of Al guys. Right. <laughs> no, I think those guys you can get. You can? Yeah. I think Al would be willing to. But he doesn't want to help. But at the end of the day, what's he going to do with Travis Kaufman? But Jerry why not Washington. a Derek Chisora or a David Price? Because they're or the kind of guys they won't, Parker, fight Philip the Herbovich. they won't fight for it. They won't fight for it, Because the risk reward's not there. Like, you know, you can have a fantasy conversation or you can have a real life conversation. And I don't blame these guys. Like, you say, oh, the pussies. No, they're not. They're in boxing and it's like, okay, I'll fight Philip Hergovich. Give me a million dollars. Give me a million and a half dollars. I can't do that for a Philip Hergovich fight. Okay, well, don't, don't ask me. So, Does you he speak any English? He's yeah, Croatian, yeah, right? yeah, he's got a huge following in Croatia as well. Good English fluid or working on Decent. it? I mean, listen, most of my dealings are with Salon. So, so how'd you get tipped to him? Is it because of Salon? Salon or I've, known him, I've known him for a long time. And Joshua, is, Joshua knows him, says he's an excellent fighter. Um, he got robbed in the Olympics in Rio to Yoka. Um, and the GB guys say he's a quality, quality fighter. So Kala comes to me and said, look, we'd like to work with you. We need, we'd love to get Matt in the US and you go. It's a straightforward deal. So when is uh, Sky Sports going to kick out the money for Buatzi and Yard? Or that, is that something that has to wait Again, for first one, Yeah, I think so, first bid. I mean, we'd love that. I don't think they're very forthcoming. It was interesting to see Frank Warren's comments saying that WBO are going to order the Kovalev fight, and it's it's on. I'm like, fuck, that's like, you shouldn't really go from where Yard's been fighting. He's a good fighter, by the way, to, like, he hasn't boxed at European level, let alone at world level. So. But isn't it easier to come off a loss when you lose to a big name? Like, it, we're more forgiving. Yeah, maybe, maybe. We're more forgiving, yeah, yeah. like Canelo lost to Mayweather, that's okay. Yeah. So if he loses to Yard, I mean Yard yeah. loses to Kovalev yeah, in the first step up. I just think when you're like, whatever he is, 15 and 0, 16 and 0, and you are a good prospect, I don't think you need to be jumping in a fight like that. Boatsy is a fight they should make because he's Brit it's, a, it's a British level fight, but I just think Boatsy is sensational. Your thoughts on Daniel Dubois going to camp with Big Baby Miller? It's the second time he's done it, he went to camp with Pavek. Yeah, but now he's going with Big Baby yeah. Miller. Remember, Dubois has been rumored, not rumored, because he's, he's done dozens of interviews saying that he's dropped Anthony Joshua. I mean, he says it, not us. Anything's good for the profile, but you can ask Joshua. He doesn't strike me as a guy trying to raise profile. Actually, Very he, quiet. He, I don't think he's actually said it. I think Frank Warren no, no, no. said it. No, no, no. He's on interview. Okay, send that to me. But anyway, you, you should ask AJ because AJ do not give a fuck. Like, he'll tell you honestly, like, because when he talks about the price thing, he's like, fucking hell, yeah. Like, price hit me. I just, David Price? Yeah, yeah. He goes, no, he had, he had me down. I was in trouble. Like, but I'll say about the price. He says, no, he's a heavy puncher. Like, he's hit me hard. But no, anyway. So, um, yeah, he's going to camp with him. I think it's good sparring for Miller. Good sparring. Does that AJ, mean he's taking it any more serious? Who? Miller. Well, he's taking it seriously. Fuck. I mean, if he doesn't, he's an idiot. Like, he's getting a chance to be the unified heavyweight world champion of the world. <coughs> so, Dubois punches hard like Joshua, but he doesn't move like Joshua. That's the thing. But he's a novice as well. So, it's a good fight. So, what did you take of uh, Charlemagne the God on the biggest U.S. breakfast club telling Joshua that he predicted Joshua would duck Lewis Ortiz, Tyson Fury, and Deontay Wilder to his face? I don't think any fighter would ever duck any fighter. I don't think... The Lewis Ortiz fight, quite honestly, has never ever been discussed with us. Whoa, Joshua said on that interview that he fought him next. No, that he they sent an offer, yeah. but you that, that Lewis Ortiz responded after Big Baby Miller was signed. No, Lewis Ortiz, the only time he's ever been.
mention Luis Ortiz is when we decided we were coming to America and it was like fuck it's Miller or Ortiz but there has never before that been any talk like when people say oh he's ducking Ortiz he's doing this no what Joshua actually said in his interview was I'm going to fight Ortiz after Miller that's what he said the other day so I don't know where that's come from but it's not like where would Ortiz Joshua make sense at in America in America in New York we've got to see how big this he, he becomes after this fight um, listen I, I don't not a lot of people want to fight Luis Ortiz because one he is good but two well, let me give you an example we went to the zone and we went to Madison Square Garden who were the paymasters in this fight and said we could fight Big Baby Miller or we could fight Luis Ortiz I can't tell you how quickly they said Big Baby Miller but isn't it your job to explain to them that the word would spread like wildfire if he was fighting a true threat one that the no, public but, believe was but, a threat but, no but when you talk about the public believe you're sometimes living the bubble the fight fan bubble right I'm just telling you commercially in the wide world of people where they go the zone go fuck Big Baby Miller undefeated Big Mouth from Brooklyn yeah him Madison Square Garden who are, who are paying the guarantee oh, we don't want Luis Ortiz I, I, by the way I think that's an amazing fight I'm with you on that and I like Luis Ortiz but I'm just telling you commercially the money's generated by the guy they think is Jerome Miller Josh Kelly Good what's fight. going on you're supposed to fight he's David Avenizen he's fighting April 20th at the O2 and then he's going to box with uh, this Polish guy who's like oh. 19 and 0 like what that. happened to Avenison? He's fighting, he took another fight. He's fighting Lorenzo, the European title. He took another yeah. fight? Mm -hmm. The money was better for a European title somewhere else? About, uh, similar, similar. So, I mean, how do you come now to Josh Kelly telling he's going to fight an Italian? Hey, he's fighting one. Ola, who you say he's fighting? Some 19 and 0 kid. He's like, yeah, rank, rank up. And he's happy with that? After, I mean, because David Avenison was someone known in the boxing community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Face Lamont he's Peterson. Fine. It's kind of like low, now high. Yeah, he's a, they're, they're similar rank. These guys, I mean, I yeah, don't think it's I don't think fight. that the fighter feels their similar rank, like to get up for a fight. For instance, no, they, Big Baby's not going to get up for Bagged on Dinner no, no. the way he's going to get up for AJ. Basically, uh, after the last fight, Josh Kelly had to take a look at whether he was going to be 154 or 147. Mm. Okay. Now we get into the nitty gritty. Yeah, and they wanted to take their time to make a decision to get the analysis done. So this fight is at? 147. Oh. They decided to come to, to oh, be so at 147. Oh, so they decided to stay at 147. Yeah. But one of the other problems was, Avenisi and to do the fight by the end of Feb, okay? And then we talked about end of March, right? And Kelly, the nutritionist, said, look, you're not gonna make 147 by the end of March. And to be quite honest with you, Avenisi and just thought, I've had enough, I'm gonna take this other fight instead. That's basically what happened. So Kelly was like, what's happened to Avenisi? I said, he, he won't wait. So uh, Adam Booth, Kelly's manager and trainer, we looked together, he come up with this guy, who was a good fight for him. June 1 will be the big fight for Kelly. On the card, on the on the, on the eight. Anthony Sims Jr., yeah. we like him. I like him, he's a character. We like him. Good guy, speaks well. Yeah. More We've interested in the UK, uh, well, it's like, but I like it. I like the, it anyway. The, the problem is, is like the UK fans are so interactive, positively, at times, till you become big and mm -hmm. then they'll, mm -hmm. they'll so at the moment, he's getting so much love from UK fans where he's like, I want to come box in the UK, this is amazing. So he's over there boxing this Saturday. For me, he's now, which way? Cause he flushed super middle now. But this will be at 170. Okay. Okay. So, so he's going to make yeah, that, just, yeah, yeah. gradually make it his way down. He's actually got a good fight. I mean, again, on paper, the guy's 23 and 16. But now he's just coming I off a decent win. It's a, it's a decent fight. But I see his future in the US because... Well, not so fast. Because yeah. his latest interview, yeah. he says, Buatzi's ugly yeah. and I'll be Anthony. And so is Yard. So I see him campaigning at 168. And I believe, I'm not saying the jury's out on Sims because he's a quality fighter, but we do need to see him under fire in a proper fight. And that will come probably on April 26th in LA. What's the level of interest for the zone for him since he's Good. in America? They love him. They love him. And we don't, you know, he's one of those fighters. At the moment, I feel like we have the best young roster in, in the sport. Right? I'm not talking about 15 and 0, 16 and 0. I'm talking about debutants, 1 and 0, 2 and 0. You now we've got Espino, we've got Pacheco, we've got Ofer Jones 3, we've got Raymond Ford, we just signed Ammo Williams, who's a real talent. So, but we don't have many of those 13, 14, 15 and 0 Americans, and he's one of them that is almost ready to be let off the leash and could be in a big super middleweight fight. He's a good looking kid, he's got a great style, 
his personality is top, top draw, I think he can be a star. Is he ready for a Devani Yildirim coming off of that loss? Uh, I would probably say he needs one more fight after Saturday before he goes at that level. So what, what kind of uh, name are you looking for for his next fight? And who's he fighting in a couple of He's days? He's fighting a guy called Matteo Veron. Who just well, beat? Who and just where beat. do you be finding these guys? I mean, you found Bagdon Dino. You find guys we've never in our life heard of. But, you know, the guy that fought um, Kel Brook. Rabchenko was a Rabchenko. Rabchenko was a good. Rabchenko is a former oh, world you, champion. You yeah. get guys from everywhere. Yeah. Uh oh, is that is that yours? Is that Louis Bag? That's no. where he's at. Oh, I, I thought that was that. He's with the billion dollars. I can't, I can't, I can't afford Louis. Yo, on camera, why are you ignoring my Texas? When you coming back on the show, the public believes I sandbagged you, and that's why you don't want to come back no, you on the show. you haven't sandbagged me. I've just been traveling around the last two weeks. Like You ignore every text I send you. I'll give you interviews longer than anybody else. I know. I still want the phone. Like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon com backslash the boxing voice with tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace